This is the story of how one man built an amphibious houseboat in his driveway. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so this whole project started out with me acquiring a 32 foot long houseboat. This was a 1967 houseboat, which I bought from one of the local marinas, and it was uh, made of steel. It was all rusted in the bottom, it had been patched a hundred times, and it was still leaking. So they kind of just sold it for scrap, and I was dumb enough to buy it. <laughs> I think that'll be perfect. In the fall of 2015, Theon paid $1,000 for the houseboat. The only thing left to do was decide what to do with it. Initially the plan was to just put it in the backyard as like a guest cottage or whatever, mow around it and put some flowers on it, but that seemed kind of lame. And I couldn't really figure out where to put it, so... Kind of a brainstorming a little bit, and I thought I'd put it on wheels so I could drive it around in the yard. And that kind of seemed sort of cool. But then I thought about it, and if I was going to put wheels on it, I might as well seal it up so it could be on the water again, right? So it's kind of escalated, and I mentioned it to a friend of mine. I was looking for some tractor wheels. He told me about this sprayer that had been sitting for like five, ten years, unused. So followed up on it, ended up getting an awesome deal on it. In the spring of 2016, Theon paid 2700 for the Big A crop sprayer, bringing the initial total cost to $3,700. Brought it back, started the project, and it really is like the perfect platform. After deciding what to do with the houseboat, it was time to get started. However, the scale of the undertaking would immediately present itself. So I found myself with a boat in my backyard on this trailer that I had made, never thinking that I would ever move it out of the backyard again. But I do need to move it out of the backyard to get it to some place where I can work on it. This seems okay and easy to do because I got a big forklift that I'm going to use and it should be all right. But the storage containers are in the way and those are built into the fence that I had made. So I have to go all the way around the building to get it to some place where I can work on it. But uh, there's like a power line in the way and there's some hills and some dumpster and stuff. So we're gonna have to work on this a little bit. The houseboat has an estimated weight of 11,000 pounds. It's been sinking into the backyard for almost a year. I knew I would need a big forklift to do this whole job with, so I called around and I bought a sweet old Clark forklift. Without that, this whole project, no way I could have done it. It's just the way it is. You gotta have the right tools for the job. Uh, it was a little unsteady, but the forklift can handle it. We managed to clear the first utility lines. The power line definitely was in the way. Uh, apparently, I parked the dump truck in the way, so I gotta move that. We also happen to have a dumpster on premises in preparation for the teardown, and this required going all the way around even more with the boat, and that put us next to the main power lines on the side of the road, which is high voltage danger. But we managed to clear those as well, so this is the good and bad, it's, it's, it's working about equal in this project. We got it from there to here. What an accomplishment. So once it's in position, uh, we just got to get something underneath it uh, to hold it up. So put some tires and some other junk that I have lying around. It's a bit heavy. <laughs> Yeah, then we're on to the Big A. The Big A has an estimated weight of 20,000 pounds. That's the way they're supposed to start. To move that, we just started it up and drove it, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> okay, start cutting. 
The next step was to dismantle the houseboat and the tractor. Pretty much started off with this big A tractor and we started dismantling it, basically taking off anything that I could resell or just scrap, try to make it as cost effective as possible. Uh, so cut that down, got basic mechanical components off of it that I'm going to use. Next up was the houseboat. I kind of like how it was all laid out, you know, there's a small kitchen and a little half bath and a couple folding bunk beds and stuff. Although the 60s interior was charming, it had to go. Uh, while I'm working, it's just it's a major fire hazard and stuff's just in the way, so I had to tear pretty much the whole bottom of the boat out. Yeah, it did stink a little bit too. Uh, so <laughs> the rusted leaking bottom would be cut out, making way for the next step, putting in the frame. The tractor chassis was a little too short and way too heavy, so ultimately it had to go. A suitable replacement was found at a local salvage yard. I got one off an old bus. It's like. 20 or 30 feet long. After a ton of work cutting and splicing, the new chassis was ready to go. Sliding into position was a challenge. With a lot of patience, caution, and lube, the chassis was slowly jacked into place. And once the frame is in and welded in place right inside the boat, because there's no reason to ever take this frame out again. After some considerable time spent welding, it was checked off the list. Unfortunately, the tractor axle proved to be too narrow for the width of the houseboat. I have to make it 12 foot wide because the boat is 12 foot wide and the sprayer was only 10. A fairly simple solution was custom wheel spacers. With the spacers in place, the wheel wells could be accurately installed. Once finished, the wheels could be mounted. You know, it is somewhere around 14,000 pounds and it's on gravel, so it's, you know, the tipping hazard is a problem. But I used basically whatever I could to jack the thing up and hold it in place. <laughs> <laughs> With the frame and the wheels installed, the beast is finally starting to look like something. The boat is, for the most part, assembled. It still has to be skinned on the bottom, and we're going to sandblast the whole thing and get a new coat of paint, pretty much getting all the mechanical stuff wrapped up. The question still looming is how it will work. As far as, uh, the drivetrain and, and drive shafts and stuff like that. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Just working out the propeller system right now and uh, there's still some things that I haven't, haven't totally figured out with that. Um, I just picked up a set of big propellers off of an old uh, Chris Craft wooden boat and uh, they're solid brass so really I'm going to polish them all up and make them look pretty sweet. And we have a transfer case mounted in the center of this vehicle so so we can run the propellers or not run the wheels and stuff like that, um, which is very important. It would take Theon considerable time, but eventually he believed he ironed out the mechanics. To best explain how it would operate, a special guest was invited to take a tour. We're here in beautiful central New York, here to check out a special project that our friend Theon Parsegian is working on. It's an amphibious houseboat. Let's go check it out. Hey Theon, where are you? Oh, I'm up here in Harbor. Oh, hey there Theon. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing well, it's about time you got here. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> wow, this is a heck of a project you got here. Yeah, it sure is. Boy, what an undertaking. How did you get up there? You just climb up. You could probably step on that tire there and reach over. Oh, this tire over. right here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's just step up in here. Careful. Oh, this whoa, is a whoa, wobbly. Whoa. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, reminds me of the ships in Boston Harbor. This is a toughie. Careful. Careful. Careful, whoa. Norm. Whoa, whoa, Theon! Theon, whoa! Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. This is a lot harder than it looks, Theon. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll try again. Just got okay, so it. I'm just gonna step over. Maybe if you grab my foot while I step. I mean, it's right. something you gotta do. I mean, you gotta make that leap. All right. Oh. <laughs> yep. Oh. You got it. All okay. right, we made it up. Come on up. It's not that hard. That's good to see you, Norm. Hey, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Wow, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let me show you around. Yeah, let's check this thing out. Come on this way. All right. You can see it's a 32 foot long boat. Uh, there's uh, 
you know, living quarters. And then there's the control center up here. We'll, we'll show you through that. Oh, uh, wait. There's a nice uh, deck space up here. You can uh, spend your uh, days on the lake. Oh, wow. Just like I did in the Boston Harbor. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, lots of space here. Nice open area. Big open windows here. It's real nice. Yeah, so go on inside. Oh, sure. Watch your step. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Yes, here's uh, the cockpit. Huh. Cockpit, huh? That's a fun right. controls. As you can see, you got uh, you know your gauges that show you what the engine's doing. You have your switches, certain features, and you got the shifter. You know, very user friendly. You can just hook right into uh, your I gear. I can hear it shifting. Oh yeah, that's all hooked up. Um, and to your right here, we got. Uh, look at those. Those are look like old fire engine. That's correct. Oh, nice. I pulled these out of an uh, a 1980s fire truck that oh. was in the junkyard, um, and just sort of retrofitted them in here to work uh, the controls. Boy, that uh, is clever. And, yeah, you just twist and unlock and lock. Uh, that's really handy. And uh, yeah, look at this wheel. Yeah, this is a, this is an original steering wheel. Looks like a classic to me. We nice, like those. Nice we like woodwork. classics. Definitely. This goes back to the... Smells uh, like my grandmother's basement. Oh, yeah. Uh, hopefully we can get rid of that smell. Um, so this is the upper deck. Uh, as you can see, there will be a little fold-out bed here. That's in pretty pretty rough shape now. All right, Norm, let's go check out the engine compartment. I'll show you how that works. Sure. Ooh. Climb underneath here. Watch yourself. All right, so... Uh, as you can see, we, we did quite a bit of uh, changes back here. There was a bunk bed where we're standing. There was a little fold-out bed there, a half bath, and a kitchen. So we're running a diesel engine, Allison automatic transmission, and a, a heavy-duty transfer case. Where um, did you get something like that? Well, that I pulled out of a salvage yard, uh, and it's cost-effective that way. It was just an afternoon. I went out and picked up that transfer case, and uh, they only charged me $100 for it. Wow, very good. That's a steel. Yeah. Steel. Get it? Yep. <laughs> and then the drive shafts come off of that, and uh, the rear drive shaft goes to the propellers. Wow. Well, let's check out the rest of the boat, huh? Okay. Oh. So you can see around the back of the boat here, this is how we'll be steering the uh, vessel with this huge rear tire. Um, this is this this. Originally it was in the front of the uh, sprayer, but these are off of the sprayer. Yeah, that same so sprayer. We reversed it, so this will be steering in the rear now, and it will also act as a rudder on the water. No and, kidding. Uh, we're mounting dual propellers on either side. Uh, obviously, still need to finish in the metalwork here, but right. uh, these are uh, as big a propellers as I could find. Uh, several amount of recycled parts here we're using. Well, you've done your research on parts, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Sourced them around. Well, let's check out some of the rest of it. Okay. So if you come around here, Norm, we'll see uh, the wheel well. Uh, oh, this wow. Is, Look this at that. This has all been cut out and fabricated in. Uh, this is, you know, a huge chunk out of the boat, but we have to put a wheel here, so... Look at the attention to detail on the weld in here. Yeah, that's all got to be watertight and... Uh, I bet, yeah. Uh, very strong. Uh, so in here, we'll, we'll have a, uh, a wheel spacer bolt into this. It's a gear reduction axle with air brakes, um, and I'll note the spacer will, will mount the wheel, and, uh, and that'll bring it flush out to the edge of the boat, and uh, be a really nice, uh, a really nice fit here. Boy, yeah, I can't s wait to see when the tie is on here. Boy, it's going to be quite the sight. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So let's come around to the bow. Sure. So Norm, if you get down low here, you'll see a little better what's going on. Um, this, this hole is is uh is being replaced the whole length of it here and we're working on the bow section uh currently and uh this is made up as uh, six individual pieces to make the shape um it's it's uh impossible to bend metal in this this right right this shape otherwise so uh got some of it clamped in here this piece is, is just about ready to be welded in final uh we have some clamping that, that runs here yeah we'll, keep we'll push it, it in there um, Boy, a lot like wood, huh? You just kind of bend it into place. Yes, it certainly is. Um, just like old shipbuilding. That's right. Uh, like we'll the vessels in the Boston Harbor. And once this piece is in, we'll, we'll work on the next section up there, and that'll that'll finish patching up the, the front of the boat. Yeah. Boy. Wow. Looks like you got a lot of work to do. It sure is. Huh.
Boy, Theon, this has been quite the project. It sure is. Something else. Never seen anything like this. Uh, it's been a pleasure showing it to you. Hey, well, I've appreciated it. I can't wait to see you hit the water. Yeah, we'll be happy to have you aboard sometime. Oh, boy, that'd be something. Well, this has been another episode of This Old House. I'm Norm Abram. Catch us next week. We're going to be in Baja the Maine. We're going to be working on a little cottage out there. See you then. Although it looked like it's nearly done, countless hours of work still remained. Once the metalwork was finally completed, the next step was painting. Okay, so it's time to paint the boat. We're going to go to uh, Tractor Supply and get some tractor paint and uh, paint it. So we get International Harvester Red, New Holland Red, Ford Red, Lance Ferguson Red, or Alice and Chalmers orange, or Kubota orange. a couple hundred bucks on paint. Uh, before we paint it, we got a primer. Make sure it sticks. Hey, you want to grab a brush? There's a couple on the pool table in the bag. Alright, so the uh, boat's primed and it looks like hell. It's like a big clay thing. So we gotta paint it.
finished painting. On this day, you experienced the joy of painting. And from all of us here, until the next show, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. It looks great, but will it work? The first test is, will it drive? Not sure what's going on. Okay, start her up. Something that got overlooked a long time ago. It was a pulley that didn't get bolted back on. Oh. Get some rain! Set up to 40 mile per hour winds. A nickel sized hair. All right, we're going to try this again. We'll try to clear the air out again. Donuts in the driveway, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Here we go. Clear. A handful of one. <laughs> Seems good. I think we're I think we'll be alright. Only one question remains. Will it flow?
Right. That seemed good. Simple post to social media drew an unexpected crowd peaking at over 1,000. The support is astonishing, but so is the pressure to have it work. Oh, you'll know in a hurry. I thought you were leaving town there for a second. No, <laughs> this is important. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go back, back home by water. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there a good place to get her out? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I see you brought a towel just in oh, case. Oh, a couple of them. This is Instagram worthy. Right on. Uh, we'll have a couple of people aboard. Um, got a couple of good mechanics coming with me, so if we get uh, if we get broked out there, we should be uh, able to fix ourselves. But I don't know. <laughs> what, do you, what do you reckon the weather's gonna do? We better go. Yeah, it looks like you better you better set sail. Okay, guys. Thanks everybody for coming out. This is awesome. Um, anyways, there's probably more ambition than engineering in this, uh, but I'm pretty sure everything should go pretty good. Um, so just, just try to enjoy it, whatever happens, and, and uh, really appreciate your support coming out here. Um, and let's, let's do it.
project took two years to complete. The estimated cost, excluding labor, was $10,000. What's its final value? You be the judge. Oh, 